Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, obviously if you've been following you'll, uh, you'll appreciate where we are right now with the bike, if not then obviously head back and have a look at the previous episodes to see how we've got to this stage. Now what I, uh, what I want to do next I think is I want to remove the, the cooling system so the radiator is empty, obviously we drained it all, um, I think the radiator is actually empty, there may be a, maybe a bit left in the bottom, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll get all of that off and then um, we'll look at the headers and the exhaust system. Obviously, I'm not expecting that to be an easy job because this has probably never been off the bike and those those uh, studs are going to be absolutely solid. So that's going to take some effort to get them out, obviously using a bit of heat. Um, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's dig into it and uh, crack on. Okay, um, before I actually dig into the, the, uh, the cooling system, I do want to take these clocks and this clock bracket off. Um, the, uh, it's, it's really the only thing left on the bike, with the exception of the braking systems that can go in the uh, can get pulled off and go into the uh, into the baskets behind me for safekeeping. And the clock's pretty easy. It's just three eight mil nuts, little eight mil nuts, and they're obviously hold onto this bracket with rubber bushes for vibration. clocks and they're actually in decent nick considering the uh, the damage that was sustained by the headlight I'm surprised that these survived but they may well not be the original ones either um, it could very well be that these clocks have uh, been changed in the past haven't actually checked the um, I haven't actually checked the history uh, as far as the mileage goes to see if there's a discrepancy in the mileage anywhere um, but that's fairly straightforward you can get apps and things nowadays for that that make it really really easy um, I might actually check it out and, and see. Anyway, right, so that's the, uh, that is the clocks I've dismounted from the bracket. There's a little, there we go, that's a little clip that goes into the side of the uh, clock bracket. It did break there, um, pulling it off, but I'll just get a new one of those. Okay. Two 12 mil nuts and bolts. Holding it on. Um, the actual bracket itself is uh, quite warm. That has been caused by um, cables um, going across it. Obviously, you've got um, things like the, the choke cable, uh, clutch cables, um, throttle cables come uh, across this way and down and through this hole. And obviously, over time, it's rubbed away the paint and it's actually rubbed away the, uh, the material. Um, it's actually quite smooth, uh, but that's easily fixed. Um, and obviously, this whole thing will just get a re-powder coat, and it'll look as uh, you know as good as new. 
um, and then all these little rubber bushes and things like that they'll all be replaced um, when it comes to reassembly because this is where the headlight mounts to okay right uh, let's move on okay cooling system what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the lower radiator hose from the water pump up to the rad and I'm just going to whip off the jubilee clip um, I only need to do each end um, the bits of uh, the rubber parts I'm just going to leave in situ for the moment um, I've got my drip tray just in case a little bit of fluid still lives inside which is very very possible yep there we go Ooh, look at that that is absolutely disgusting this is lime scale that is lime scale caused by somebody using um, tap water basically in a cooling system this is the reason why you use demineralized water it's absolutely disgusting right. and obviously rust of the rust out of it. Obviously this will all be getting a good clean up. These rubber hoses will probably be getting replaced um, because they're, they're, they're fairly cheap, they're not actually very expensive. Okay, right, now to the other side. Okay, this side, the main hose that comes from the rad all the way up to the thermostat, um, just below the uh, the inlets for the for the valves. Um, the uh, That's the next hose we're gonna remove. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna slacken off one end. and pop it off yeah, it's been a bit it's a bit stiff Take it off the thermostat housing. And then pull her out. And there we go. Let's just ew, look at that. Absolutely disgusting. There was evidence actual coolant was used, but it seems fairly obvious that they also use tap water as well. Okay, so next what I'll do, the two lines that go from, they come down from um, the back of the block, go down to the oil cooler, out of the oil cooler up to here. through now a bit more out of the uh, coming out of the oil cooler I'll let them drain off <coughs> okay next we've got the this is the hose that these are the hoses that go off over to like the reservoir and you know the expansion reservoir and that sort of stuff so we'll whip them out of the way
and again they're a bit stiff. Oh. Get a little screwdriver under that. Come on. Doesn't want to come off this one. And I think we're pretty much there. Now we're ready to uh, whip this radiator off. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to actually remove the radiator from the bike. Uh, that is the, that's obviously for the temperature sensor. And what we need to do now is unbolt it. There's one bolt on this bracket at the bottom with a nut on it. It's not going to come out actually, it seems to be pretty solid in there. I'll sort that out in a bit. And then at the top, we've got another two, one on each side, one pointing this way and one pointing the other way. Uh, I think this is actually a captive nut on the back of this one. Oh no, it wasn't. Could have just fell into the pan of coolant. <laughs> before that ends up in the coolant as well. And there's the bolt. So that's that side completely off. As you can see, we've got a lot of movement in the top now. What I need to do, get over the other side, take the other one of these off. Okay. The one on this side also has the bracket for the hole. So we can just pull the connectors off of that. And there it is. We'll give that a clean up later. Now, hopefully we're in a position to move this out. Right, we've got a little, one of those um, bendy cable runs, which I can't seem to open. Quite corroded actually. Yeah, well, I think what I'll do, I'll get a screwdriver and just undo that. Then we'll be in a position to take the whole rat off. Okay, so here we are. Here's the radiator out and then we've just got the connector for the fan up here which again doesn't look too clever if i'm being honest it looks a bit <laughs> looks a bit melted uh, and then we've got we've got a, a tie wrap just here to snip and there we go that is the radiator let me just make sure it's completely empty there's a horrible brown muck coming up and there we are as you can see this is obviously seen much better days it seems like everything's like been crushed all the that's been eaten away part of it's missing and this is obviously impact damage. Don't even know if that's watertight. It looks like there's uh, evidence of coolant leaking. So again, I won't be surprised. Fan looks okay though, so hopefully that's saveable. But yeah, I think we're, uh, we're definitely in for a new radiator on this project. Right, if we get down here, we can see, you know, we can access all of the studs on the headers now. So that is what we're going to do next. Right then, um, exhaust studs for the headers. Right, these are incredibly rusty and probably like chocolate and as you can see they're, they're just coated in rust and these like to shear, they like to snap, they like to round off. Um, best, best chance I think I've got of getting these out is to use a good um, 
six sided socket, not a 12 point, because a 12 point will just strip them out. Um, and I've got a heat gun as well. So what I'm gonna try first, on the very first one, on cylinder four, is get the socket on. Get my ratchet into a good position, and then just gently try and turn it and see if the nut will go. Ooh, she did, she did. Right, it's a very good start. Try the same on the other nut. Now tight, but it's turning. And again, that's a stroke of luck. Now, the likelihood of me being so successful on the other three is remote. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go along all three, oh, sorry, all four, the other three, um, and do the same thing. If I find that it doesn't want to turn and it wants to start to strip out or um, round off, I'll get a bit of heat on it and uh, try again. Um, it doesn't really matter if the stud comes out or the nut. Um, I think on this one, the stud's coming with it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the stud's coming as well. So, like that. Um, makes no odds as long as we can get it off. So, there we are. That's the... Uh, that is the first one off. So what I'll do, I'll do the other three, I'll bring it back at the end. Okay, as you can see, all of them came off without any drama whatsoever. Only one stud came out and all the nuts came off uh, off of all the other ones. So I'm absolutely made up with that. Took no, I didn't even have to apply any heat. That's how easily they came off, which is really, really weird because, and highly unusual because in my experience, these are a sod. Um, I'm not going to complain. I'm going I'm to chuck it down as a, as a, as a minor victory. Um, but anyway, we're in a position now to get the exhaust off. All we need to do now is remove the hanger um, off of the rear, uh, rear foot peg assembly and then the whole system will come off. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, let me change my tools, quickly clean my hands and then uh, we'll switch to the back of the bike. Right then, the only thing that's holding the exhaust system onto the bike now is this uh, rear hanger here. I'm not actually sure if any of this is um, original or not. It's, it looks a bit weird, but I can uh, check the past diagrams. And if it's not right, I'll, I'll get the right bits. Um, yeah, so once this is off, the whole system should be able to be removed. And then I do want to talk about something very briefly regarding this system because um, as I showed you in one of the previous episodes, I've got a new can and a link pipe and a new one of these. Um, now this can is in better nick than the one that I've got, but the link pipe um, does have a little bracket on it, um, which this one doesn't have, um, which is obviously unusual. But this link pipe and the downpipe section is all one piece. There's no separation um, in it at all. And there we go, that is the exhaust system off. It's actually surprisingly light, um, as exhaust systems go. Yeah, there's no, there's no um, jointing here at all. It's, all. it's all one solid piece. So yeah, um, obviously, what I need to do is when I come to uh, fitting the E, the E headers is probably use the other link pipe that I've got as well, but use this, this can because this can, is less scratched and will clean up and polish up a lot nicer than the other one. Um, it's just that little, yeah, there's a little bracket on it. Um, I'm not sure what it's from, what bike it's from, possibly the ZX6. I don't know if that's different or not, um, but yeah, uh, it, it'll be fine. We'll, uh, we'll make a really nice system out of what I've got. Okay, so looking at the bike now, um, we can take the hangers off the back, um, and now we're pretty much there with regards to getting the engine out. Now, obviously what I do need to do is remove a few uh, more bits of the loom from various plugs, coils, etc., etc. Then it's a case of, um, you know, removing all the, the mountains. So uh, what I'll do, I'll wrap up this episode here. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll see you all for the next one where we'll be one step further and possibly even actually drop the engine out. As I said in the previous episode, what I do want to do is I do want to remove the nut and the clutch basket and pop the stator off while it's in the frame because it just makes life easier. Um, 
as I said, if you've ever tried doing that on an engine on a bench, it's it, it's difficult. It's not easy at all. So yeah, so I'll um, see you all for the next one, guys. Don't forget to check out uh, Kev Shed on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links will be in the description below, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all over there for uh, for a bit of a chinwag uh, about the project. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now.